Hello, my name is Dee Williams and I am the Head Start Mental Health and Wellness Coordinator and I am so excited to welcome you to our first session of Parent Connect. This is a series of sessions that will share parent tips and tools from Conscious Discipline Parent Curriculum. Today's focus will be on the skill of composure and the impact a calm and connected adult can play in the social emotional development of their child. This presentation will be broken down into three points. Number one, just breathe. Calming the chaos within ourselves. That's the first step. Number two, be there. Connecting for cooperation and being present. And number three, me first. Three steps to actively calming myself before engaging with my child. But first, let's take a moment to answer the question, what is this conscious discipline? Well, conscious discipline is the research-based program that we use in our classrooms to support children's social emotional development and to guide their behavior. It helps adults to stay calm enough to see behavior as an upset as a signal to teach children. It then provides effective strategies for teaching the social emotional and life skills to our children. So let's get started with the first and foundational conscious discipline skill, the skill of composure. So what is composure? Composure is the skill that allows us to become the person that we hope others, namely our children, will become. We teach children through our example, not our lectures. So it's much more impactful to model the behavior we want rather than just talk about it. Our example becomes their experience, and experience is what actually forms a child's model of what the world is like and how to navigate through it. Teaching composure to children requires us to have self-control and that we harness the power of perception that brings with it the belief and understanding that the only person I can change is me. Life brings conflict, which we really don't want or like. So we avoid it, we pretend it's not there, we hope it goes away, or we end up blowing up in a frustration or just feeling overwhelmed. I may know how I wanna to respond to my child or to manage my upset and resolve conflict, but that doesn't mean always that I choose to do it. I remember vividly reacting to my children like this. You be patient in a very frustrated and impatient tone of voice, demanding that they exhibit the exact opposite of what I was modeling for them. Hmm, I cannot be the only parent out there who has felt like they needed to immediately apologize to their kiddo for a burst of unrestrained behavior. Well, conscious discipline takes an adult first approach that says, Discipline yourself first, and then you'll be ready to discipline your child. Yep, wish I would have known that when my children were young. So my first tip for you is to bring calm to the conflict. And your tool for that is just breathe. Research actually tells us that three deep breaths that gets some oxygen to our brains will actually cut our stress response to life's upset in half. When I breathe, I put a pause between that upset and my reaction or my response. I am in essence hitting the pause button when someone is pushing my buttons and triggering my frustration. So I have a better chance of responding in a helpful way rather than just reacting out of my upset. Breathing puts a pause between that upset and my response. This is one of the first tools we teach children in our classrooms. For instance, we use the acronym STAR. When I feel upset in my body, and you do feel upset in your body, I can stop and smile, take a deep breath, and relax. So we're gonna try it and just see if you can feel the difference in your body. We're gonna do it three times. 
So stop and smile. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Out through your mouth. And relax. Again, smile. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Out through your mouth. And relax. One last time. Smile. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And relax. Chances are you actually feel some of the stress in your body loosen its grip and a sense of calm after that exercise. Or you may just feel a little lightheaded if you're not used to breathing that deeply. So connection is so important for this reason right here. Cooperation follows connection. The more connected we are, the stronger and healthier the relationship. And the more apt the person in the relationships are to cooperate with each other. Think about it in friendships or with a significant other, it's true. When we feel connected, we automatically want to interact and cooperate. And when we don't, we don't. So willingness and cooperation are directly tied to our connection. So if you want more cooperation, focus on more connection. But connection doesn't just happen. You can be in the same place for extended amounts of time and still not be connected. Connection requires that we get our brains into the same place where our bodies are. And that takes effort and awareness. There are actually four elements to building connection with one another. Eye contact, touch, presence, and a playful situation. Eye contact, we are actually focused on one another with our eyes. Touch, we're close enough for physical contact. Presence, my mind is here in the moment, right now with you in a playful situation. This is playfulness because it speaks to interactions that are fun and enjoyable. In conscious discipline, we use what are called love rituals that take about 30 to 60 seconds and they intentionally connect. These are little social games like peekaboo or pat a cake or playful interactions for older children that may take ordinary moments like before breakfast or when you're buckling them into their seat belts or bath time or bedtime. And you would purposely insert connections with these things into the day. It doesn't take a long time to build connections, but it does take being intentional. So here's a tool for you to try with your child. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. You will find this playful love ritual rhyme on your parent handout with the words and some suggested actions. Give it a try with your child and just watch and see what happens. There's a good chance they will want to do it again and again. It would be great if all of our moments were like that, playfully interacting with our children, connected and cooperating with those around us. But it wouldn't be realistic to think that we can live life without conflict or upset, or that our children have the capacity to always be composed and compliant. Life happens, we all get upset. Our goal is to regain self-control once we have become upset, before dealing with our children. We must discipline ourselves first and our children second for it to be successful and effective. One thing that can be helpful is to be conscious and aware of the things that push our buttons. Maybe it's whining or tattling or lying or defiance or yelling or, well, you get the idea. So take a minute and identify what might be one of your triggers.
Now, imagine that behavior going down. This is where our composure comes into play. Let me share with you the last tool that you can put into your toolbox that will improve outcomes between you and your child. It's called active calming. And this is what you can do when those buttons get pushed. Active is calming is how you become composed. It's a three-step process. First, breathe. Be a star with those three deep breaths. Two, reassure yourself. I am safe. Keep breathing. I can handle this. And say it out loud. I am safe. I can handle this. Keep breathing. Number three, wish well. What's that? Well, when I take that moment to breathe and put a pause between my trigger and my response, I'm putting myself, not someone else, in charge of me. I am taking responsibility for my response, not blaming the circumstance on the other person for my upset. I am taking my power back. They cannot make me angry. I get to choose to respond out of my best intentions after breathing and calming instead of my knee-jerk reactions. Remember, I've just cut my stress response in half by breathing and getting some oxygen to my brain. And when we are under stress or feel threatened, we have a tendency to shallow breathe. So remember the deep breathing is very important. Then when I affirm myself and my intention out loud, it literally has the power to change my brain and how I see the situation. I realize in that moment, I love this kid. They aren't my problem. They're having a problem and they need me, a composed adult in their right mind to help them sort through it and to work through it and to learn how to handle it. When I see the situation differently, I will respond differently and my attitude and energy toward them will change. I wish them well rather than reacting out of my frustration or impatience or upset. The key to parenting is staying calm enough myself to see the child's knee or cry for help. They don't always know, nor can they always articulate what they're feeling or what they need, but a composed adult can. They can begin to see a, that all behavior is communication and they can then help the child regulate their emotions and upset and learn new skills and solve the problems that they encounter. The parent handout has this process outlined for you. Breathe, reassure myself, I can handle this, and then wish them well before I respond. When you do this, you're actually modeling for your child how to handle conflict or upset in a healthy way. We know children learn through the experiences, not our great lectures. And this process is a pattern that will help us be the person that we want our child to become by modeling it. If you have your parent handout, you'll also notice that, the, that these, it, this is information on what we call the safe place in our classrooms. The safe place is a place where children go to practice self-regulation skills. You can get ideas from your child's teacher or the FRS or family advocate or home visitor for setting up a safe place in a home setting. But the bottom line is of the matter is there is no safe place without a safe person, which is why the skill of composure is so important. You are their safe place, their first and foremost important teacher. That is where we ask for your commitment. What tip or tool that you learned today, would you be willing to practice? Remember, experts tell us it takes 21 days to form a habit. Skills aren't something that we're just going to hear and do like that. They do take practice, so remember that. So are you willing to maybe push the pause button and breathe when your button gets pushed? Or are you willing to connect with your child through a love ritual at least once a day? And lastly, are you willing to actively calm yourself before you respond? Well, that's it for now. And we are looking forward to our next 
Parent Connect meeting. Be looking for more Parent Connect resources that will be posted with ideas and information to support you as a parent. If you haven't checked out the Conscious Discipline Facebook page, check it out. They have lots of free resources and follow it. They are awesome resources, links, and videos that will help you in your parenting journey. You are your child's first and most important teacher, and we are here to support you. So thanks for joining us. And until next time, I wish you well.